Hey folks, welcome to Solid IRA. My name is Mike Rasika. I want to cover some very, very important topics here. A lot of people never get this type of information. And I believe that everyone has the right to retire. But unfortunately, the task of retiring has been put on you personally. It's not up to your employer anymore. It's not up to the government anymore. Uh, it's entirely up to you for the most part. The more effort you put into it, the better quality retirement you will have. Uh, follow along with this information. Figure out if it's something that you're interested in uh, and figure out if it's something that you should be sharing with the younger uh class, maybe your kids or your niece and nephews. Uh, I invest with my niece and nephews and with my children. Uh, they're adult children now, 28 and 30 years old. Uh, they started off much earlier than I did. Uh, I'm very proud of that fact, and I'm very happy for their future success and having a retirement account to fall back on. They may retire by the time they're 45 years old. Uh, in a very comfortable lifestyle. So in this video, I want to cover the different levels of investor. And uh, it, this is a very interesting topic because it is really a gradient scale. Um, and I'm going to start with level zero. Now, I got this information from Dan Locke, who is my YouTube influencer. I've been following him for quite a while now. And uh, he starts with level zero, <clears throat> which I think is brilliant because level zero, you are not an investor. There is no investment opportunities on the horizon. Uh, you actually own really basically no assets. Uh, this is where I was at a high school uh, with level zero. My whole conversation revolved around, I'm not making enough money. And unfortunately, a lot of Americans get out of high school into level zero as investors, and they stay there their entire lives. My father was one of them. Uh, he got out of high school, went into the military, into World War II, got out of uh, the military and went to work for the post office. And that was it. He was a level zero investor, owned no investments. Uh, he was forced to, by my mother to actually own a house. He did not even want to own that house. He didn't like houses. He thought they were too much work. And so he remained his entire life at level zero. Uh, I think we all can relate to this level of not making enough money ever and not having any assets and not really looking forward to owning any assets in the near future. I don't know how people get into this rut and they stay there uh, because this stuff's not taught in school. I think that has a lot to do with it. And because it's not taught in school, there really is no awareness of this type of uh, conversation. And so people just basically sleepwalk through life thinking this is the best it's going to be at a level zero. I need to make more money. Um, now there's a, the, the next level is a level one where, I mean, I started off at level zero out of high school. Uh, I worked in a machine shop. I wanted more money. I needed to work more hours. Uh, even working extra hours and weekends, I still did not have enough money. Uh, and I just thought that was my life. Uh, so I moved up into level one. Uh, in my 20s, uh, level one, I became a borrower. Uh, the only way for more money to come into my life, besides my salary, was to get a credit card or several credit cards. Uh, I did not own a house. I did not, uh, I had a car with a car loan. The only way I could get more money into my life was through debt. 
a lot of people live in this position. Uh, with a level one investor, it's even possible that you may get into gambling uh, as another form of potential income. Doesn't work out so well, doesn't uh, usually pan out. I don't know very many gamblers, if any, that have over time won. Uh, the odds are stacked against them. Usually don't have enough time to learn the game well enough. Uh, unless you, uh, I think the only game that I think that you could actually excel at is uh, real live poker, where now you can actually have a skill. Uh, the other forms of gambling is just sure luck, and the odds are stacked against you with the house. I had uh, a gambling issue uh, early on in my 20s. Like I said, I had a salary. I borrowed money. And then my big chance to score was uh, a trip to, in my case, Atlantic City uh, with my father. <laughs> so actually, I guess my father was a level one investor because he, uh, he added gambling uh, into the mix. Uh, the next level is a level two investor. A level two investor will manage to squirrel away 10% of their paycheck uh, which is fantastic. Uh, that, this is the start. This is this is uh, starts to build a little momentum with a, uh, a level two investor because now at least they see what it's like to have some money in the bank. Unfortunately, the money that they're saving up for may be for a large purchase, a large down payment, or a full payoff on a used car or a new car or the big plan for the vacation uh, coming up next year. They managed to save for that, which is fantastic. I mean, at least they're putting away some money. Now, they still believe that investing is risky and they need to avoid risk at all costs. So they take that money and they put it into a uh, certificate of uh, deposit or certificate of disappointment, whatever you want to call it. And they manage to get a half a point of interest return on that money as they squirrel it away, waiting for that large purchase. Uh, but at least they're learning to put some money away, which is, which is good. Um, which moves us up into the level three investor um, where, you know, with a level three investor, there is some thought of the, of the possibility of retirement. Now they may have a 401k at work. Hopefully they do. And they actually take advantage of it. Uh, some employees, employees that I've worked with over the years, had not even taken advantage of the 401k, even when the employer was offering some type of a match because they felt like they weren't bringing enough money into the house to begin with. How in the world could they ever squirrel away something pre-taxed that goes into a 401k? So at least with the level three, there is some awareness uh, that, hey, you know, let's get this money squirreled away pre-taxed buy some type of, I don't know, mutual funds, or at least put it into a money market. But it now it's at least forced savings. You're forcing that money into a vehicle that you're not allowed to touch until you're 60 years old or 59 and a half, which is, which is a, a big plus now. Um, so moving up the ladder here, you know, I didn't get to a, a level three investor until I was in my late 30s. Uh, I had a, a good employer. I was in manufacturing and I took full advantage of the forced savings because I really never became a level two investor. Uh, I just couldn't put money away. Uh, there, as soon as I put money away, the transmission would blow up or we needed uh, new tires on the car. Uh, it seemed like my car was was a big part of my um life's expenses because uh, we didn't own a house at this point. We rented 
And um, probably my biggest expenses that I had were incurred by uh, keeping two vehicles going, my wife and, and my car, so that we could afford to go to work and keep these cars running so we could make it to work. So I never really became a level two investor. I really just jumped right into a level three uh, with my employer. Thank God I had that um, vehicle to stash money away. Uh, he was giving a decent match for my contributions. Of course, I was paying heavy fees that you can't even see the, the when the uh, custodian of, of the 401k actually takes their fees out pretty substantial, but you never get to see those fees. Uh, I actually day traded my 401k back in the late nineties uh, before they put all kinds of regulations on it. But that custodian that was handling that account, every time I jumped in and out of the money market and into the um, science and technology fund, they were taking a percentage and they loved the fact that I was day trading this thing. Uh, the fees were were ridiculous. Um, so it's, it's kind of like a passive investor. You don't really know. Like, I only had a choice in that 401k for maybe, I think there was like eight or nine different opportunities in there. There was a science and technology fund, which was the most aggressive. There was a money market fund, which was the most secure, safe uh, did not fluctuate up or down, just kind of stayed sideways at, at about zero. And uh, then there was five or six different funds in between, like an S&P uh, type fund, uh, which were mildly uh, aggressive and, and the range in between. So as a passive investor, I didn't really know which, um, which stocks were actually owned inside the mutual funds. I was too busy at my job and raising two kids. And now we started looking for a house. Um, we were able to actually purchase a house. And that's when I started to become a, a level four investor. Uh, I realized the value of real estate. When we bought our first house, and I believe it was 1997, I remember the exact purchase price was $100,000. Uh, we had $10,000 down that my mother-in-law gave us to purchase this house. I did not have forced savings for that. Uh, so $10,000 down, $90,000 mortgage. And we were paying uh, PMI insurance because we only had a 10% equity share in that house. So my wife, after very careful consideration, wondered why we were paying this extra $240 a month insurance on something that actually would not pay us in case we defaulted. So the mortgage company told us that as soon as you have 20% equity, then you can drop this insurance policy, which was basically ensuring the mortgage company that they were going to get paid, regardless of whether we paid the mortgage or not. And so we made the decision to spend the $325. This was a big deal back then. Uh, $325 bucks to get an appraisal done. Uh, the appraisal came in at $140. And we had more than enough equity now in this property. The property value had gone up. And my wife was very happy not to pay the $240 bucks anymore. And I was very happy because I made forty grand. I didn't do a damn thing. I think we put up a new fence and now the house had gone up $40,000 uh, in value in, in less than I, less than two years. And I got real excited and I stopped being, well, I continued being a passive investor with my 401k. I started actively moving into a level four investor where I actually participated now in looking for real estate that would actually throw off income. Uh, I remember it like it was yesterday. This was in 1998. I started working with a realtor. I started working with a uh, mortgage broker and I had a real estate attorney and we bought our first two family house 
in April of 1999, I had uh, purchased a Carlton Sheets late night TV real estate course. And uh, I got to say, it, it put me on the map as far as being a level four real estate investor. Uh, I was actively working on my real estate portfolio now. I was not just a passive investor with my 401k. I was now investing outside of my 401k. Uh, my father thought I was crazy when we bought our first two-family house. He's like, you can't even take care of your own house. How can you take care of another house? I says, well, dad, it's actually you can't take care of your house. I'm taking care of these houses fine. <laughs> and so uh, my Carlton Sheets formula was if you're collecting $1,400 a month in rent, you can afford to pay $140,000 for the purchase of the house using conventional financing. So that's a 1% rule, 1,400 in, 140,000 purchase, and it worked. Uh, we started managing tenants, which was a whole new experience. Uh, not only did I get to know about my own financial problems, but now I got to hear about my tenants' financial problems. Not only was my transmission blowing up every once in a while, but theirs were too. And they had their rental issues uh, making rent every month. But now I'm actually active in my real estate, in my investment portfolio. Uh, it felt good. I felt like I was getting somewhere. I actually had lost the desire to go to Atlantic City. Uh, so I'm basically curing my gambling problem by replacing it with the excitement and the thrill of owning rental properties. It's very thrilling um, because it's so, I, I so entered the land of the unexpected. I did not belong to any real estate clubs. I did not know any other people that were actively purchasing real estate for investment uh, other than myself. I had my little team. I had my mortgage broker, my real estate attorney, and my realtor. Uh, we looked at a ton of houses, and I really felt like I was on my way. I was doing something over and above. I was totally outside of my comfort zone. Uh, and I think I took my wife with me to get outside of that comfort zone too. Uh, she didn't show it because her mother had purchased a two family house as a real estate investment. Uh, the house that we lived in for the first 10 years of our marriage. And my mother-in-law always knew that real estate was a good place to be. Um, she bought a house for $154,000, two-family house, four blocks from the ocean, and that house now is worth over a million. Uh, not a bad play for a single um, widow. Did very well for herself. Taught me a lot. Uh, so when I became a level four investor, like I said, I lost my appetite for gambling. I knew that I was going to be long-term with this property uh, that we purchased, this first two-family house. Uh, it is, has been in my portfolio now 22 years. A very lucrative property now. We went through some tough times back in 2011 and 12. When our tenants stopped paying us rent, uh, we had to continue the best we could making our mortgage payments, uh, even though the tenants uh, stopped making their rental payments. Uh, the rent was, the, the mortgage payments were based entirely on the, on the rental income, which is usually the way it is. But it was a, it was a long buy and hold, and um, which led me to other rental properties that we purchased uh, that we still own to this day. Thank God I did what I did. Thank God I bought that $300 education program from Carlton Sheets at two o'clock on a Wednesday night uh, when I should have been in bed 
getting ready for work tomorrow. Um, but then as I became more sophisticated, I started going to real estate meetings. I started hanging out with other uh, investors. I, I moved up into the level five active investor. Uh, a very small percentage of the population ever get to a level five, maybe three or 4% of the population. This is the level that I would like to see you get to and do it in a much quicker pro progression than I did because I didn't know about this stuff. I didn't have anybody telling me that there were different levels of investor. It just kind of happened to me naturally. Like I said, I never became a level two because I still can't save money. I just don't save money. I The only way I save money is by, um, I like to buy gold. Um, I, I've got, I've got some, some gold that uh, I buy, the, but I can't spend it. I like looking at it. I get the thrill of putting money into it. I, you know, I, I take five grand and go down to my local shop and, and buy a couple of ounces of, of gold, I get to count the money. I'm getting the thrill of spending. I get this beautiful piece of metal. I'm a machinist. Machinists love metal. I look at these things. They're beautiful. And I never want to part with them. And it's a form of saving for me. Because if I've got cash in my hand, something's always ready for that bundle of cash. Uh, I'm getting a new roof put on one of the one of the uh, two families right now. Uh, literally today, it's a big job. It's going to be about 18,000 bucks or some wood replacement uh, addition to the porch and blah, blah, blah. And so I get the thrill of spending 18,000 bucks, but that is a total equity build for this property that I've owned since 2003. Uh, so I get the thrill of spending and then I get the additional added phantom equity that goes into my net worth. Uh, I pay very close attention to my net worth. I know essentially on a month to month basis where I stand with my net worth, uh, maybe plus or minus 10%. But that's something my father never did. My father never paid attention to his net worth. He worked. He put a little bit away so that he could go to Atlantic City and do a little uh, gambling. Uh, he liked playing slot machines and craps. Uh, he even at one point had uh, taken out an account with Bally's as a marker, which I never understood. And he had this $10,000 marker that he could draw against. But it was attached to his bank account. Like, what fun is that? Um, so he had, a, he had a very different outlook on money and what he did with his spare time than I did for some reason. I don't know where I got it from. Uh, probably from my mother, uh, who had a relative uh, very successful in real estate investing. So a level five investor... They actively work on their investments. They invest first, and then they spend what's left over. That's where I'm at now. I am able to take my earned income, money that I make from the different things that flow into my life, take that money, buy an asset that's going to throw off capital, buy that asset. And then when that asset throws off capital, that's money that I'm allowed to spend. But it has to go through the washing machine first. So it has to come in as earned income, purchase an investment that will actually throw off capital. And then when that investment throws off capital, I've got some options now. I can either reinvest it into a new asset that's going to throw off capital, or I can spend some of it, or I can spend all of it uh, on whatever. If I want to travel for two months, I go. I use that money that comes out of my assets as income, not for my workable income. I have money coming in from different departments, uh, different multiple streams of income. And 
when my assets throw off capital, that's money that's discretionary. I can do whatever I want with that. So most people, I, I hear this so often, it's, it's, they don't realize they're putting the heart, cart before the horse. I'll pay my bills and whatever's left over, I'll invest. And yeah, I was in that rut for 50 years. As, as my paycheck came in, I would pay my bills and then I would invest. The only way that it worked for me was with that 401k, that's for savings. That's coming right off the top before I even get my paycheck to bring home that gets demolished with the bills. That money goes into the account. Get to that level automatically by buying assets to throw off cash. And that's, that's the level five that you want to be at. Instead of investing what's left over after spending, you want to invest first and spend what's left over after investing. So that's pretty much as far as I want to go with uh, investment levels for now. Uh, if you can get to level five as soon as possible, uh, that's what we're here for. Uh, Solid IRA wants you to build up enough assets to throw off capital that you don't need to work anymore unless you want to. You work because you want to, not because you have to. I wish somebody told me this stuff when I was 30 years old. I really believe that you can jump your education by piggybacking off of the information that Solar IRA is giving you to get you to accelerate to a level five investor and just skip over the other ones. So if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe and do all the YouTube things that everybody else asks you to do. Thanks for going on this journey with us. Uh, I think we're going to have a, a good time going through this process. I know I intend on making so many more videos, uh, very passionate about this, uh, about helping people. So thanks again.